Hey guys, we are finishing up our last day of new material this year uh, today. So it should be exciting. And a lot of this stuff is not anything too new. It's stuff that we would have talked about last year in biology, if you were in biology. So hopefully this goes well and everything makes sense. So first thing, again, I'm trying to put page numbers places so you can find them and read about them if you think that's helpful. Uh, but this is the process of separate species becoming more similar. Okay, and remember, so evolution is always, or I should say maybe natural selection, is always selecting traits that make an organism more fit, right? So if an organism's niche is similar to another species, the same kinds of traits are going to be selected for, right? Because it's always the most beneficial traits that are selected for. So if they're filling similar niches, the similar traits are going to be beneficial. Similar traits are going to be selected for. Um, so this is called convergent evolution. And to converge means to come together, right? So they were more different and they were becoming more similar as natural selection selects for similar processes. Okay, so kind of the, you know, literally textbook example of this is sharks and dolphins. Okay, there's a species of uh, ancient swimming reptile that we could also throw in here that would follow the same idea. Um, but this works. Okay, so sharks are a fish, dolphins are a mammal. Right? They are not really closely related at all. But we could list a lot of traits that they have that are similar. Okay, so their general body shape is similar. Okay, a shark uh, flaps his tail up and down because he's a, oh wait, no, side to side because he's a fish and a dolphin has spines like ours that move more easily up and down so their tails move in different directions. But body style wise, besides that, they're very, very, very similar. Okay, so they're lighter on their tummies, they're darker on their backs, they have a dorsal fin sticking up off of their backs, they have two big fins out to the side, they have teeth, they're fast, um, because they're both predator, predator animals out in the ocean, and so those traits that are similar, that are useful for one, are useful for the other. Right, so they're going to have similar traits because they're doing similar things. Opposite, oops, divergent evolution, all right, divergence means to go apart, okay, so a single species separating and becoming um, more different over generations, and this you can kind of think of as speciation that we talked about on the last page. Um, but the idea is, you know, we had species, a single species and it's diverging from itself. It's becoming, it's kind of splitting. Like if you think back to our activity with the phylogenic trees, whereas this one would be like that. Um, and we have kind of a similar word for this adaptive radiation and this is usually for a, maybe a little more specific version of this so this is just any time two things become more different from each other over evolutionary time and adaptive radiation is usually when a single species moves into an area with lots of available niches or you know there's a mass extinction and all of a sudden there's all these available niches and a single species can diversify and become lots of species to fill all the niches. Okay. So, you know, again, the classic example, there's always a kind of a classic example to point to, is the finches in the Galapagos Islands. So one species of finch probably happened to be blown in, and it lands on these beautiful islands. There's hardly any competition, so the species diversifies 
over many, many years into different species. And now there's species that eat bugs, there's species that eat seeds, there's species that eat all of the different kinds of food sources. And so they're able to do all of these things. And again, if you go to this page, there's some useful pictures there to kind of help with this concept. All right. Um, now, I love this idea. When I took evolution in college, this was a very fascinating idea to me. Um, this evolutionary clock. Okay. So as far as we can tell, mutations pretty much occur at a fixed rate. Okay. So, you know, they can kind of figure out how fast mutations occur. Okay. And so we can kind of use that knowledge to kind of looking at a species DNA and other species DNA, kind of reverse it, if you will, um, to be able to set a clock as to how long ago we think they might have diverged from each other. Um, and so we can kind of clock, you know, how long ago was a uh, domestic cat and a wild cat's DNA the same. How long ago did they diverge from each other? You know, and it's kind of a fascinating ability that once you get a species genome all the way mapped out, you can kind of start figuring stuff like this out. Um, so based on this, in addition to the fossil data, um, we can establish common origin or I meant, probably meant to make this a blank too, or the idea of a common ancestor between species, you know, how long ago was that common species alive? And when we think about the idea of common ancestors, right, they're the species that may or may not exist anymore that are ancestors to more than one species. So, you know, I, I always get this argument when we start talking about evolution. Of like, oh, if evolution's a thing, why are there still monkeys in the world? Um, that argument is absolutely an argument that can be defended uh, by evolutionary ideas. Because this doesn't, you know, it, it's never been argued that humans are descendants of a extant, meaning living species of primate besides humans. Right, so there was some common ancestor. A population of that ancestor diverged from the others and became humans. Right, we're not saying, you know, that gorillas are our ancestors or chimpanzees are our ancestors. No, there's some other species that was common ancestor to all primates. Okay, and then again, through adaptive radiation, divergent evolution, we have become different, we have become uniquely different than those other species. Okay. Um, all right. So here's kind of a picture of that process that I was just kind of speaking of. All right. So we have some ancestral primate. Okay. And this, I meant to maybe make a pit. This is, this is called a phylogenetic tree. Okay, and if you did the activity from last Friday, you did a little practice with these. But remember, each of these branching points is where there was a common ancestor and divergent evolution split them up. Okay, so we have some ancestral primate. There was a common ancestor. And these particular lemurs, oh, I don't know what those are, and lorises branched off first. So they are the least related to the rest of the primates. Then there was some common ancestor that was here, and it branched off, and then there was the tarsiers, and everybody else going this way. Some common ancestor of monkeys and humans. We have monkeys over here, New World monkeys. Um, and then we have everybody else going this way. Some common ancestor here, Old World monkeys and everybody else, and then we have gibbons and everybody else, orangutans and everybody else, gorillas and everybody else, and then chimpanzees and humans diverged at some point. Right, so if you go backwards, right, every fork point is a common ancestor, and time is going this way, right? So this is the longest to go, 
time is going onward, 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 onward. And no, this branch is just because it's long and straight here is not saying, oh, well, the, these existed here and they just kept going and they haven't changed since then. That's not what this is saying, right? This is saying that this is where they branched off from these other things, right? Obviously, there was still diversification here because there's three species on this single branch. So this is... A simplified one right this isn't even to the species level except for with humans and chimpanzees because there's more than one species of all of these things so we could have more and more branches in here if we wanted to be more precise but we're just kind of being an overview here but you know so the longer back in time though we have the branch the more closely related we are right so humans and chimpanzees are more closely related than chimpanzees and gorillas Okay, because so we have uh, our common ancestor more recently than they do. All right. Um, all right. Extinction. A word that you probably learned 11 times if you're a junior. Okay, so this is when an entire... It can be defined, and I like this definition probably better, when a population ceases to exist. Um, but you can also define it as an entire species becoming extinct. So if you think about this, you know, I talked about the Florida Panthers yesterday. If, you know, they uh, totally open up hunting to Florida Panthers, and they just all got killed. Okay, they went out and killed all of the Florida Panthers. Remember... That's the same species as mountain lions and pumas. Okay, so the species maybe still exist, but they don't exist in Florida anymore. So you could say the Florida panthers are extinct or the you know mountain lions are extinct in Florida. And that's a fine use of the word extinction, but a lot of times they use it for the whole species. Um, but again, we can use this word just for populations if we want. You just have to kind of clarify when you're speaking that that's what you're talking about. Um, so another good example, the population of gray wolves in Yellowstone was extinct for decades, right? We killed them all. There were no wolves in Yellowstone for a long time, so they were extinct in Yellowstone. There were still gray world, wolves in the world, they were just extinct from that area. Okay, another way of thinking about it, um, is the entire species of T-Rex is extinct, not just one population, thank goodness. All right, C, extinction can be caused by a variety of factors. Um, yes, we do have these uh, mass extinction events, but most of the time, you know, if you think about mass extinctions do happen. There have been lots of them throughout our history. But they represent a very, very small amount of the time of Earth's history. So most species have actually just died off gradually. As their environment changes or another species beats them out in competitive exclusion. Okay. Last bit. So then we have this idea of mass extinctions are periods of time when it's not so gradual right all of a sudden a lot of species are going extinct in a short period of time and I want to emphasize a short period of time is probably still hundreds of years okay so when we are talking you know if you remember hearing about like the dinosaur extinction right so Meteor impact, volcanoes erupt, climate changes, dinosaurs die. That's not happening in a few days, right? This is something that took years and years and years for them to all go extinct. So, remember, when we're talking about the history of Earth, what we call a short period of time is still a pretty long amount of time for what we usually think about. Um, so this is the, the, the most famous mass extinction about 65 million years ago 
was the mass extinction that killed most of the dinosaurs and left the rest of them to very quickly try to adapt, try to change. And the ones that have survived still are the ones that are birds. So sometimes uh, paleontologists, the ones who study fossils, like to call the dinosaurs that we usually just call dinosaurs the non-avian dinosaurs. Avian refers to birds. So basically they're saying, well, birds are dinosaurs. The dinosaurs that didn't fly are just the non-avian dinosaurs, and the birds are the avian dinosaurs. So um, you can think about that if you want to, you know, watch Jurassic Park and get that fun idea of thinking of dinosaurs as birds back when it was brand new. And they were, that was one of the things they kind of got right. Um, anyway, last idea I want to kind of talk about is a lot of scientists think that we are, you know, in thousands of years we will look back on this time that we are living and say that we are in a mass extinction because there are lots and lots of species going extinct right now, um, not from human, uh, sorry, not from natural changes uh, to ecosystems, but because of humans and how that we treat the environment and do things um, that way. So uh, kind of a sad note to end on, but here we are. Um, as always, let me know if you have any questions. Talk to you later.